My first year as a head baseball coach was a unique experience. Rather than have some macho sounding sponsor like Big Bob Steel Erectors, my sponsor was a local dentist by the name of Dr. Sam Cousins. And in honor of Dr. Sam Cousins, the emblem we had on our shirt was a little happy tooth. Now that's kind of cute, but it did create some problems because we had some of the other kids who wanted to call us the tooth fairies. <laughs> now, we, in, in Slapout, Alabama, where I lived, we did not have coach pitch baseball. So I had to take my son to a, an adjoining community there to sign him up to play when he was ready to play. We went in and we started signing up, and as it always turns out, they did not have enough coaches, so I volunteered to take a team. After we got all the kids signed up, then they started talking about the draft. Now, drafting seven and eight-year-old kids to play baseball is no big deal, right? Wrong. Wrong. You see, I didn't know any of these kids, but the other coaches did. They had lists this long of the kids they wanted to draft and when they wanted to draft and what position they would play in the whole nine yards. All I got to do was watch the kids go out and throw a couple of balls, attempt to catch a couple of balls, and attempt to hit a couple of balls. When it was all said and done, I had a team that was pro probably had two or three third or fourth round draft picks. Had a couple of good players that I saw that the other coaches had overlooked. A couple of my players had brothers, so I had the brothers on my team, and I had a couple of kids that didn't make it through the draft, and they were, were assigned to the team. So as I looked at them, I thought, you know, we do look a little bit shaky, but we got busy, and we started to practice. And I'm going to tell you that we probably practiced a lot longer and a lot harder than we should have for that age group of kids. I'll, I'll have to admit that. But we worked hard, and we came together as a team. I knew that we didn't have the greatest skills, but we certainly had a great attitude. Finally, we finished the practice and we started our season. We had seven teams in the league and we played each team twice, so we had a 12-game season. Well, at the middle of the season, after six games, there's Dr. Cousins sitting up there 6-0, and undefeated. And I had one of these coaches come up to me that had drafted so well and had such great kids, and he looked at me and he said, you know, he said, I've watched that little ragtag bunch of kids you got out there play, and said, there's no way in the world that they ought to be able to win. I said, how do you do it? I thought about it for a minute, and I finally looked up at him, and I said, nobody told them they couldn't win. Nobody told them they couldn't win. Well, you know, we went along, and we did lose one game in the second half. We ended up 11-1, and one, and we won the league. Now my kids knew for sure that they were winners. Well, I could tell you about a lot of kids from that team. It's 25 years later. I could tell you about Terry. Terry is one of these kids you never knew what he was going to do. Not once, but twice during the course of the year, Terry decided to relieve himself in center field. <laughs> I'm sitting in the dugout, and I look out there, and he's got his pants down around his knees just hosing it down. <laughs> Didn't even bother to turn his back to, to, to the plate. Or I could tell you about Matthew. Matthew's out there trying to catch a fly ball, and he misjudged it, hit him right in the mouth, knocked all four of his front teeth out. But Matthew ran and picked up the ball and threw it back in before he went to pick his teeth up. <laughs> now, sometimes I guess it's good to have a, a dentist as your sponsor, right? <laughs> but there's one kid I'll never forget, and I'll just call him T. T was one of the few African-American kids that I had on my team, and T came from a much tougher, much poorer, much more difficult home life than any of my other kids. At age eight, T was pretty much on his own. He was just struggling to survive. Extreme poverty. Very unstable family. Just no support at all. In fact, nobody ever came to pick T up after practice. So my son and I, after every practice, we'd load T up and we'd take him home. T lived way outside of town, way off the main road, in an old farm shack that sat out on the edge of a, of a corn patch. And we would drive T up and we'd let him out in the front of the house. But he never went in the front door. T always went, ran around the side of the house and went in and out through the window. Now, T was a good kid and he turned out to be one of my better athletes. But you know, I can just see him now out there with that great big old glove on that little bitty hand. He always kind of had his head turned to the side like that when you kind of look at him. But you know, I got to know T and I was really glad I had a chance to spend some time with him. In 1993, we moved from Alabama to Georgia. 
And 20 years after that, my wife and I were out in Centennial Olympic Park one afternoon waiting to meet some friends when this very attractive young black lady walked over and she said, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? I said, no, go ahead. She said, are you Mr. Nix? I said, yes, I am. She said, did you used to be in Wetumpka, Alabama? I said, I sure did. And she motioned for this young man to come over to where I was. I turned around and I found myself facing this young guy, about 30 years old, well-built young athletic man, well-dressed, and he stuck out his hand and he shook my hand. He said, Mr. Nix, I'm T. You remember coaching me in baseball when I was eight years old? I'm not usually speechless, but I was speechless. The tears welled up in my eyes. I hugged him. We stood there and talked for just a few minutes. T had indeed become an extremely good athlete. He was much sought after. He got a football scholarship to a very outstanding university. Although he'd gotten hurt during the time he was there and it ended his career playing, he stayed on as a student assistant. Uh, and he got his degree and now he was an IT specialist working for one of the major companies in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, our friends came and we had to leave. And as we started to leave, I asked him, I said, T, you just got to tell me, how in the world after all these years did you remember me? And he looked at me and he said some of the most gratifying words I've ever heard in my life. He said, how could I ever forget my very first coach? Now, I'm not going to stand here and take credit for the success of T or any of the other kids that I coached through a lot of years of coaching youth sports. But I will tell you this. You never know what a little bit of time, a lot of believing, a little bit of motivation, and a ride home after practice may mean in the life of a child. Sometimes all you have to do is show them what winning looks like and they'll do the rest. Thank you for what you do and God bless you.